KSR's Jack Pilgrim here with a new Rapid Reaction guest, Sean Smith, co-host of Sources Say With Me. We are live from the United Center following Kentucky's heartbreaking, absolutely crushing loss, 89-84 here in Chicago against number one Kansas. Uh, Sean, it, it, this one's a tough one to swallow because I think everything we kind of hoped and dreamed about this team in terms of the basketball players, Cal talking about guys that are capable of passing, dribbling, and shooting, those dogs and those dudes presented themselves. We saw absolutely terrific performances, at least in the first half. Rob Dillingham, Reed Shepard exploding on, in both halves, uh, having individual standout efforts. Um, they, we got to see them fight a little bit, respond to adversity. They get down early, but claw back to take a 14-point lead uh, early in the second half. You got to see so much to love, and then things crumbled down the stretch. Miss shots, miss free throws, turnovers, kind of the story of the game where the villain, Hunter Dickinson, kind of takes things over and uh, presents Kentucky an unfortunate loss, but plenty of positive things to take away. Oh, yeah, a, a lot of positives from Kentucky in, in this game. And we saw a lot of the things that we had seen, but we also saw one thing that we hadn't got to see yet, Jack, and that was Kentucky in a close game. They were up four with under four to play. They just don't know how to close out a game like that yet. And that is something that I think they will learn from over the course of the next couple of months and when they get into that NCAA tournament later this year where they will understand how, how they want to play, who they want to play through. I thought the biggest thing late was it turned into a lot of Antonio Reeves, kind of like it did last year, just trying to do something. And that was kind of not the flow that Kentucky wanted late. So who do they play through? DJ Wagner did not play well tonight. Justin Edwards did not play all tonight. Going into the year, those were probably two dudes that you thought would be on the floor playing through them late, and they just didn't show up tonight and have their best effort. They will get better, but Kentucky's got a lot to figure out. Substitution patterns were questionable, the, the timeliness on some things. Rob Dillingham goes absolutely nuclear, scorching hot. The, the I think one of the hottest individual stretches we've seen since Kellen Grady at home in that one game, uh, Alabama at home, uh, Malik Monk in the North Carolina game. One of those types of efforts in the first half, Rob Dillingham, four consecutive threes, and then makes an unselfish pass, that one extra pass to Antonio Reeves in transition, 15-point swing where you really start seeing Kentucky build that momentum and uh, find that rhythm of, okay, they, they got punched in the mouth early, but we can really start to see the, the light flicker for all of them. And uh, once that moment happened, you see Rob Dillingham go to the bench. Uh, he was gassed. Whatever the excuse was, it Rob Dillingham has always been the type of guy that you ride the hot hand. He is a as streaky as they come for better and worse at times, and uh, it felt kind of counterproductive to go away from him, ride the cold hand, I guess you could say, DJ Wagner and Justin Edwards really struggling from start to finish. Uh, didn't get a whole lot from Antonio Reeves early, that 1-3 uh, in that one crazy sequence with Rob Dillingham. That was kind of the only bright spot he was early, and then he kind of found his groove and then missed some unfortunate shots there at the end. But uh, again, it's the, it's the patterns and the sequences that really made this a tough one to swallow while still acknowledging that men you know, do you balance knowing that you're going to have to have DJ go off at times, you're going to have to have Justin go off at times. Do you play through them or do you ride the hot hand? And that's something that Kentucky's going to have to answer in the coming weeks. Yeah. And, and I, the thing I told you a moment ago was that the negativity, I, I just, I don't really have any of it right now. And I kind of don't want to see it because this team put itself in a position to win this game. It didn't win it. And I think I don't even remember how I worded it to you a moment ago, but I said something like, you wanted something that you're just not ready to have yet. But they're going to be ready to have it at some point. And the backcourt too, and another position for John Calipari with this team, he was in new territory with them. In a tight game, you know DJ and Justin are two of those guys. I'm not saying that those two guys don't need to play, but tonight I thought there was a stretch there where Kansas goes on its run, and that's where I would have loved to have seen Rob Dillingham. He did have three fouls. He did pick up a fourth when he came back in. Reed Shepard needed to be on the floor. They'll figure those things out over the course of the season in the next few months. But to me, everybody was in a new position tonight. Kansas wasn't in a new position. That's a veteran team. But I saw two teams tonight here at the United Center that are good enough to make the final weekend and good enough to win a national championship. Kentucky basketball is back. This is going to be a very fun season. And this is I, I saw other national media guys saying they'd already seen enough by halftime what they needed to see from Kentucky. Like, I think they're going to get some of that respect that was missing in the offseason. They just weren't ready to capitalize and finish a game. They will be ready the next time they're in that moment. 
uh, Cal talking a lot about Adu Thero's standout performance, Jordan Burks as well. Not a whole lot on the stat sheet, but he was providing that energy and effort that this team is just kind of having to buy time until you get at least one of those bigs back. Aaron Bradshaw, probably the closest to return. You don't really know what you have yet with Zvonimir Avisic, and Ugo is a big question mark. Tonight, seeing the style of play, Bill Self singling out Trey Mitchell saying, that's the way Kentucky's going to play its best basketball, having Trey at the five. He said, I knew Kentucky was going to spread us out and drive. They spread us out and drove, and Trey Mitchell kind of being a big key part of that. I just don't know how you go away from the style of play that we saw from Kentucky. Where is Ugana Onyenso's fit here? I think that's going to be a question that we might have to answer, and it might be a harsh reality uh, on that front. But you see the fit with Trey, Trey Mitchell, obviously. You see the fit with Aaron Bradshaw where he's going to fit right in. And Zvonimir Visic, I think it's going to be a while before we kind of see the, the fruits of that. Uh, but but there's at least a vision there. Um, question why Cal kind of went away from some of that randomness there at the end, kind of went back to the the, the tight basketball that uh, kind of led to some of those isolation shots and, and uh, ball stopped moving. It, it, it stuck a little bit and, and kind of reverted back to old habits. You got to be able to break those. Got to be able to continue to play that random basketball for 40 minutes. You can't just get tight in the last four minutes, uh, but still plenty to love, Sean. Yeah, and that, that's a position there where they still don't know where offense is going to come from when they actually need it, right? Like it's random basketball, and that's when they're at their best. But when it gets down to the final five, six minutes, who do they play through and what sets do they use to get to those shots? Antonio Reeves did hit some baskets, but it was a pretty inefficient night for him tonight. What ended up being from three-point range? Three of 15, three yeah, of four? Three of 17. Three of 17 from three. But he did hit some big shots in the second half, but he also missed a ton of good looks there uh, late. But they did go to a floppy set late in the game. And I, I leaned over and told you, I said, that's the first time I've seen Kentucky go floppy with this group, especially late in games. And I think that when it gets down to it and it comes down to a grinded out possession by possession basketball game, I didn't think that this team was ready to win that. I said it on Sources Say with you last night that if I, I trusted Kentucky to be in the game late and have a chance, but I didn't trust them to finish it off. I picked them to lose by two. They lose by five. Trey Mitchell missed some big free throws tonight too. And I'm not just singling out him, but there were a lot of things that Kentucky is probably going to kick itself when it watches this tape and say, okay, even with some of our inefficiencies, we didn't shoot it well from the floor overall. We did hit 12 threes. We still left a lot out there, and it was more on us why we didn't win this game. Kansas – is a really good basketball team, but I told you earlier, Kentucky has a much higher ceiling and everyone saw it tonight. Well, we'll end it with this. We were there as the players left the locker room before the game started. There was a, a type of the, uh, loose mentality that we saw from them. They walk out, the suits are, the, the, coach, the assistant coaches come out, dress well, they're in suits with pocket squares, they look good. The players come out, one of the student managers has a boom box above his head. They're, they're rapping and singing and enjoying themselves. You would have no idea that they were about to go into the, the gauntlet that was about to hit them. Number one Kansas with arguably the best player in college basketball right now. Cal mentioned at the end, we have dogs. Like we, we knew that we were ready for this moment, and, and you could kind of sense that going into the game. They got punched in the mouth early, 9-0 run, kind of had to work them the, 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 their way back, and they found a way to claw toward a 14-point lead early in the second half. Those things, above all else, you got to get the bigs back. You got to figure out who to play down the stretch. You got to find ways to make shots at the end. But above all else, Kentucky has the pieces to contend. And I think that's all I care about. Like, I know it's a heartbreaking loss. I know it's sad and it's disappointing. The record in the Champions Classic is what it is. Kentucky hasn't won one of these big games in a minute. And you're like, dang, man, I just, I wish this, it felt like we were trending toward that fairy tale finish and we just could not close when, when it mattered most. But I'm leaving the United Center tonight going, this team has the pieces necessary to Absolutely. go to Phoenix in April. And, and, I think that's all that matters. We'll play through it. We'll figure out the rotations. We'll figure out the substitution patterns, who's going to get the last shot, what the rotation's going to look like when the bigs come back. All of those questions we can answer at a later date. But for right now, I feel really good about this group. You don't get questions answered when you play New Mexico State and when you play Texas a and Commerce. That's no disrespect to those two programs. You get questions answered when you play number one Kansas and you play in this environment. 
And I think Cal has some stuff now. Not only does Cal have some stuff, but so do these guys that they can go to the tape, they can look at it. The next big test is in two weeks against Miami. Uh, I, I kept saying that this season is perfectly spaced out. Two weeks, two weeks again, or two or three weeks to North Carolina, you get another test in SEC play, obviously, and then Gonzaga later in the year. You're going to have checkpoints throughout the year. Let's see what Kentucky does with this loss. Where does it go from here? DJ Wagner, Justin Edwards, I'm going to keep going back to it. They weren't great. Antonio Reeves wasn't great. Like the three dudes that you kind of depended on or, or leaned on at one point, they didn't really have their best night. And Kentucky still had the ball and then up four with a chance to win the game in the final four minutes. Like that's a lot to like. And I, I think this team's going to be fine. I think they're going to be right there. I told you on the floor a moment ago, I said, I don't see any way that this doesn't end in Phoenix with this team. Like, I'm more encouraged sitting here tonight at the United Center than I have been encouraged in four years watching Kentucky basketball. And it was fun. Kentucky, fun Kentucky basketball is back. That stretch where Rob Dillingham went nuclear, nuclear and, Ro, and Reed Shepard goes back-to-back -back threes to take the lead four feet behind the three-point line, those individual moments, we just haven't had that heart. We haven't had that oomph with Kentucky basketball where it felt like, all eyes in the college basketball world, every spotlight known to man, every camera, every light shining down on this program, and they delivered. They didn't deliver. And it was kind of a, a great quote by Cal there. He said, this is everything you could have possibly asked for in a game, given the circumstances, given the team, given the opponent, except for the win. And that's how I feel leaving the United Center. It was a tough loss, tough breaks down the stretch. Got to get a couple things figured out, but the, the pieces are there. There's so much to love, Sean. Uh, final thoughts here from the United Center before we get out of here. Just Kentucky just has to figure out who they are in moments. And, and honestly, this wasn't a game where the moment was too big. They just kind of lost themselves within the moments of it, like late. They just didn't know how to win that game tonight. That's okay. It's November 14th. I'm big on quad one opportunities. Sure, Kentucky's not going to have an extra one on his resume at the end of the year, but what it did tonight was much greater than just winning a single individual basketball game. It figured out that it can compete with the best of the best in college basketball. I think the entire college basketball world tonight's going to bed thinking, okay, we were wrong. That is a top 20 backcourt. That's not just top 20, that's a top five backcourt, backcourt in college basketball. Kentucky has a chance this year to have a special year, stay locked in with this group. They're going to continue to get better and better. This is just the beginning of it. Some things to be frustrated about. Plenty to love here from the United Center. Jack Pilgrim, Sean Smith will be back, hopefully, with some more positive news here uh, here in the next couple days. Got to get back in the win column, but so much to love here. Uh, go Cats.